everyone welcome back to another video so there's a good chance that a lot of you found my channel from a video called everything I wish I knew about being pre-dental this video is going to be everything I wish I knew about dental school specifically starting dental school in my first year so I was kind of taking notes all throughout my first year of dental school of little tips things I did things I wish I did and I'm just gonna share them with you all today if you haven't already seen I did make two other videos before this the first one was specifically for tips for sim lab or pre-clinic whatever they call it at your dental school and then the second one was an overall Q&A about my first year of dental school and this is the third and final kind of part of my first year dental school advice so really all of these tips are just to make your life easier I'm sure they're not gonna apply to everyone but I think that they would help out most people I have them on my iPad here so I might be looking down reading them off but the first thing that you might have already thought about is befriending some upperclassmen and the easiest way that I've done this is through student organizations so whether I'm on leadership with them or just a general member, a really great way to meet upperclassmen is through student organizations, going to club events where other D3s, D4s, even D2s are there introducing yourself and you don't even necessarily need to be outside of school friends with them, but just seeing a familiar face, having their phone number so you can text them with questions, ask for study guides, ask questions about logistics or how to get to a certain place in the school, or even if you wanna assist them in clinic. Which leads really nicely into my next thing, which is assist as much as you can. So this is kind of self-explanatory, but I think it's something a lot of people don't take advantage of. For example, this summer term, we don't have a, as many credits as usual, so I'm trying to assist at least two or three times per week to really maximize my experience. And honestly, I find myself remembering things that we've learned about 10 times better if I actually see it happening with a patient, see it done, rather than just reading about it on a slide or some like ambiguous situation. A patient might have this happen if they have these conditions. It's very different when you actually see someone in person and can kind of see it play out or see another example of a certain abnormality in the mouth, getting to see it on a real patient and looking at it rather than looking at a picture in a slide. So assisting is so great for building up your comfort and your confidence and I've really enjoyed it. So as soon as you're allowed to start assisting, definitely do it. And even if you aren't sure if you're allowed to assist, just ask someone that runs clinic. For us, it's called like PCCs, or you can even ask those upperclassmen that you know if you're allowed to, because it might not be required or like promoted to you yet, but you still might be allowed to be doing it. This is like very specific, perhaps just to our school, but check every resource that professors provide. So they might upload a PDF of the slides and a PowerPoint, but sometimes the PowerPoint might have notes written in like the speaker notes section of extra information or things that they said, or they might also post a transcript somewhere, or they might post readings and say that I could ask you questions from these readings. So really look over every single resource that they give you because there might be kind of hidden information that you wouldn't have thought of if you're just looking at one of the downloads off of your learning platform. This is something I cannot emphasize enough, but that is ask for help. I know it might feel weird at first or you might feel like you're the only one having a certain issue whether that be in sim lab or whether that be with a class that's really challenging for you or even like getting around the building. Asking for help is so so important because it's gonna get you the result you want faster. Rather than struggling alone for days and weeks, you can just ask someone, they can give you, oh yeah, when I was a D1 and I was learning how to do this, at first I did it this way, but then I learned that doing it this other way made it a lot easier and gave me a better result. That has happened to me so many times in sim lab and made the biggest difference so definitely ask for help and that's another reason that knowing upperclassmen is really great but you can also get a lot of help from your peers that maybe majored in a certain topic that you have a class on that you aren't as great at or peers that are understanding something better in sim lab than you or people that know their way around the school and then of course your faculty your pre-clinic faculty and anyone that's instructing you in your courses. Next is to join clubs or have hobbies outside of school. You're gonna kind of see a recurring theme here about having things to do outside of classes, but I think it's so important for your happiness and your well-being to be involved in things that isn't just studying all the time. Especially with clubs at dental school, they really nicely supplement the education that you're getting because you're getting very science-heavy, clinic-heavy education, but you're not necessarily learning about advocacy that's important in dentistry when it comes to working with insurance companies and setting regulations and standing up for dentists' rights, and then you're not necessarily learning about running a practice at all, about business management, about dealing with insurance companies. 
And those are things that you can gain from networking in your different clubs, from meeting dentists, from talking to other dental students at other schools, and just in general from speakers that will come to those clubs that are going to teach you a lot that you're not learning in dental school. And as for hobbies and everything, pretty self-explanatory, but just make sure you're still doing things that you enjoy and are passionate about outside of school because that's really going to help with your mental health and your overall happiness. Something that I started as soon as I was going into dental school is keeping my phone on Do Not Disturb all the time. So that's the little like moon icon and I have it set where my favorites on my phone can come through if they call me so people that are important like my parents and stuff if they need to get a hold of me it goes through but I don't get notifications for emails or social media or texts or anything popping up and like vibrating and I also have my watch too so that would just be a lot but it's really great to limit distractions when you're studying and another thing that I wish I did more often was using the Pomodoro method that timer where you're studying for 25 minutes five minute break 25 minute five minute break or you can even do like 45 15 depending on how long your attention span is. Okay, this one would save you a lot of embarrassment, I guess, knowing the cross-contamination policies at your school so you don't get yelled at. There's been so many times where I accidentally forget to take off one little piece of PPE and I walk somewhere and someone's like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? So just make sure you're aware of what you're supposed to have on or not have on in certain parts of the school or once you're wearing something if it needs to be discarded after a single use and also when you're working on your classmates a lot of people like to be taking like videos and stuff which is fine but make sure that you're not using the phone with your gloves and then going and putting your gloves like in that person's mouth because that's really nasty so just be thinking and be conscious of what you're doing when it comes to cross-contamination so you avoid getting yelled at and also aren't making your classmates uncomfortable. This is something that I wish I did a lot more. I did it a few times, but honestly, you should do it every single time. That way you're learning as much as possible and better preparing yourself for boards. And that is to review your exams if you have the opportunity. So sometimes if we didn't have a cumulative final and I wasn't going to see that material again, then I didn't really care to set up an appointment to look over my exam and see my mistakes or to meet with the professor and kind of go over what I did wrong. So I would highly recommend doing that because I think it's going to pay off in the long run. This one is so, so, so important. I can't stress it enough. Obviously dental school is very taxing and it can be a lot at times. So I really, really, really encourage you to utilize your school's mental health resources. We have a counselor just at the dental school, but usually a dental school is attached to a bigger undergrad institution. So they will have some kind of resources. But really, really, I encourage you to utilize those resources or go to events or they have like support groups for people going through certain things if you don't want to be just one on one with a counselor. But it's a really great way to deal with whatever you're going through with school, outside of school, real life issues, balancing everything. Transitioning into dental school is very hard and I would not have been able to get through the first semester without contacting our counselor and having some guidance from her and just realizing that so many people were having the same issues that I was and that made me feel a lot better and that's something I wouldn't have known unless I talked to her. The next thing is to hold your class council to a high standard and make sure that they're communicating with faculty for things that your class needs or wants. So your class council is usually going to have people that can communicate with your faculty about curriculum, about scheduling of exams, about conflicts so if you have an exam and you have five other ones that week you can probably get a professor to move that exam to be the week before or the week after but that's going to be through your class council so you want to make sure that they're representing you well they're being respectful and they're getting things done so just either be a part of your class council and do a really good job or make sure you're holding them to a high standard because they can really really make or break your dental school experience by advocating for what your class needs the next thing is to save your preps and sim lab it's really fun to look back on your terrible terrible work once you're like a month out two months out a full year out and along with saving your preps I also really recommend saving most of the supplies so at least at our school we're given a certain amount of burrs in a bag at the start of the semester and a lot of people were using them only a couple times and throwing them out versus me even if it started to feel dull I would just put it in a little baggie and save it because eventually you might start to run out and have to be using old burrs or some Sometimes a dull burr is a little bit better to use at the end of the practical just to be smoothing up your walls because it's not going to cut as easily. 
So those are just some things to think about because every time you run out of materials, again, whether that's burrs or teeth, all these things that depending on your school, you might end up having to pay for if you go through too much of it. So if anything isn't totally, totally used up to the most that it can be, I would say save it because you might end up needing it or you might be able to help out a classmate who has run out of something. So saving things is really great. And as I mentioned in that SimLab tips video, you really want to have everything organized as well. So you can watch that video for some tips of organizing your sim lab stuff. Another thing I really recommend if you're doing a restoration, which is the filling portion, is to have an uncut Hypodont tooth to reference to see what the anatomy is supposed to look like as you're building it up. That can really help, especially if you're doing amalgam carving or anything that's very, very technical with the anatomy. Just a few more tips. This next one is to stock up on CE and experiences. So one company that I really like to go through is Dental Nachos. They offer tons and tons of free CE that you can access as a student, whether that's a 48 hour rental of something that you can watch at that exact time. I personally more so download the things that I can keep on my account profile there and watch whenever. I believe I have like 14 or 15 sessions of CE saved on there that I can watch eventually. Hopefully I'll get around to finishing them sooner rather than later. But another popular institution is the Panky Institute or you could use Spear. A lot of dental schools have partnerships with Spear. Ours doesn't, but a lot of them do. So you really wanna utilize as much CE as you can, even if it seems like, I don't really know anything about endo yet, why would I watch this? The way that people have told me is that by watching that, once you actually learn it in school, you're gonna have a much better handle on things versus learning a very basic level at school and then still having the CE be kind of above your head. It's better to watch the thing that's more complicated, get a few things out of it, and then you're gonna have a lot better basic level once you start working. Another way to get CE or just get experience outside of school is through Lunch and Learns. And a lot of times our school's doing them in the evening now around 6 p.m., but that could be through ASDA, that could be just a faculty putting something on, but going to more of these seminars, these presentations is going to always, always help you. One of the last things I have on here is start to develop your professional vision and goals. That's something that I really kind of started to think about towards the end of my first year, but looking into books, podcasts, talking to more people in that role or that specialty or running the type of practice that you think would be cool and also doing your research to figure out kind of what your trajectory is gonna look like upon graduation. What kind of practice do you wanna have? Do you wanna have a practice? Where do you wanna be? There's a bunch of different structures of dental practices these days, so it's really good to kind of come up with your professional vision because that's gonna make it a lot easier when you're figuring out what CEs you wanna be looking into, what events or conferences you want to be going to, what kind of connections you want to be making, what classes you really want to be focusing on learning. That way you can kind of maximize your experience in dental school to best benefit you later. The last thing and one of the things that is most important to me is that you need to set time for your friends and your family and yourself. You need to take time off. I highly recommend setting one day a week, so usually that's like Saturday or Sunday or something where you're not studying, where you're totally checked out and just zoned in to being with the people that you're with or zoned in to just doing your own thing. Because I really want to emphasize that you are not just a dental student, you're a full human. This is your life, even though you're in dental school, don't waste it away being miserable studying constantly because you will probably be just as successful if you take a day off and get more well rested, then you can go back into school feeling more refreshed. So that is everything that I wish I knew my first year of dental school. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.